Hello, today we are going to discuss about R commands grep and GRPL. First, let's talk about GRPL. Let's look through the documentation. GRPL returns a logical vector indicating whether a pattern is present in the vector or not. So let's go through uh, an example so that it's clear what I mean to say by that. Let's say if we have a vector x which is a, B, C, D, E, F, A, D, S, D, S. Okay, just taking a random example, it doesn't mean anything as such. Okay. Now, we want to find which of the elements from this vector contains letter A. Right, so we use GRPL A, X. Okay, so it returns a logical vector indicating whether the particular element is present or not. So the first element ABC has A, therefore it has returned true. DEF has no A, so false. ADS has A again, so true. And similarly for other elements as well. We can also use regex here. So if you are familiar with regex, we can use that in GRAPL command as well. So let's say we want, to, we want to find which elements only start with A. So this raise to symbol means it starts with A. So the first parameter in the vector is the pattern which we want to find and the second is the vector in which we want to find that particular pattern. So if we use this, so it returns that first position has true and the third position is true. The first element here starts with A and the third element here starts with A. Rest all, this contains A but it does not start with A, hence those are false. You can also find a vector which ends with A. So dollar means that it ends with A if you do that. It just gives the last element ends with it, which is correct again, right? I'm not an regex expert, but you can use various variations of this. So let's say if you want to know which of the elements starts with A as well as which elements end with A. So you can combine both of these using the R symbol A or this. first element starts with A, third element starts with A and the last element ends with A. So it's like this. You can also do. So starts with A and ends with S. Right. So first, third and fourth element. You can use various variation of regex with this and find out the elements which have that pattern in them. Now as far as grep command is concerned, it returns the index of the match. So here we get a logical vector indicating if the match is present or not. But with grep we get the index of the element of the vector where it is present. So let's try to modify the same example. So for this if we use grep instead of grpl, it returns 1, 3, 4 and 5. So it says that the first element of the vector, the third element, the fourth element and fifth element has the pattern E in it. Similarly with this, if we do grip, it just returns 1 and 3 because 1 and 3 only starts with E. This just returns 5 because only the fifth element ends with A. And this returns 1, 3 and 4. Now one thing to notice here is the output of GREPL command is always equal to the, the length of the vector, which is x here. So, for example, if you see the length of x is 5 here, and the output of GREPL command would always be 5, irrespective of how many matches it has. But that's not the case with GREP command. The output may vary because it returns the index of the match. It only returns the index which matches the pattern. Length of output may vary for GRP command. Uh, and obviously all this is case sensitive. So if you do 
this, all of them would be false because it's case sensitive. None of the elements in the vector matches with the pattern which is starts with small a, small letter a. So there is a parameter called ignore.case. So if you want to ignore case, you just do true. So by default, the ignore.case is false in both the cases here and here. So if you do ignore.case true, it will match the pattern again. So irrespective of the case, uppercase or lowercase of the pattern, it will match the case. So it is present in GRPL as well as grep command. So it will work with both of them. Now apart from that, uh, there are a lot of other parameters as well, especially in grep command, like invert and value. What invert does is, it returns the indices of the pattern that will not match. That's completely opposite. Let's remove ignore.case. So this is this returns 1 and 3, which matches the pattern. 1 and 3, the first and third element matches the pattern. But with invert is equal to true, it will return the indices which do not match the pattern. So 2, 4, and 5. So 2, 4, and 5 do not match the pattern. Right? There is also another parameter called value is equal to true. Here in grip, it will return the value of the element in the vector which matches the pattern. So let's remove invert is equal to true now. We know that this pattern is matched by first and third. So when we do value is equal to true, it will return ABC and EDS instead of 1 and 3, the index. Is that clear? There are a lot of other variations. You can use it in various cases. There are a lot of options to use grip and GRPL. But for now, I think this much is enough to begin with. You can start practicing and using it. So everything is given in the documentation. Invert and all those things are explained well in the documentation. I hope this video was useful. And if you have any comments or feedback regarding this, uh, please mention them in the comments. And I'll be back with a new video soon. See you.